This video will overview the basic steps taken to create a church website with FinalWeb. You might be a current user and you'll be helped to see some new features that we've recently released, or you may be looking to start a free trial to see if this solution is right for you. Either way, I hope this walkthrough will be helpful. After proceeding through the Step 1 instructions, you'll see a template preview page. Some of the templates like this one have a live preview that you can scroll through and even click through the links to see what a site would look like using it. But others just have a large image. Hover over the arrows to scroll through the templates. I'll select the template that I like. and then click the button to the top right to begin. Step two, fill out the form to create a free 14-day trial of the software. You'll be directed to a newly created website and the third step will appear. In this step, you will customize the top and side menus of your website. You can think of it as setting up the site's structure. I'm going to remove the default items first and then I'll begin adding new ones that I'd like to use. First, I'll add a home link. And then I'll drag up a link to the audio video downloads page, but rename it to Sermons. Next will be a text page called About Us. And then I'll double click it to create submenu items underneath. I'm going to bring up a new page for Doctrine. And then above it, the Leadership page. And then I'll create a new text page for our location and each of these pages' content will be modified shortly. Double-click to close the sub-menu, and then I'll just add a few more links to the side menu in the same way as I did to the top. Save the changes and you'll be directed to the last step, which is adding content to your website. This particular template allows a custom logo, so I'm going to add that first. I've already created one that should fit these dimensions, and I'll upload it from my computer. After the logo is placed, I can then start adding images into the rotating image section that you see displayed here. Click to add a new image, and then I'll choose from the library. Be sure to click the button to automatically resize the image. I'll add a title and subtitle and choose where I'd like the text to go. And you can add up to 10 images in the top bar area. I'll do just one more and then go back to the home page. The next thing to configure would be the lower image menu that this template contains. Click to edit the home page image menu and another menu builder will appear. I will drag four new links into the menu area above and rename them if necessary and then save the menu. When the menu appears, click the Edit Image link over one of the items, and then I'll click to add an image from the library. But you would also be able to upload your own image here as well. Be sure to click the button to resize the width so that it appears correctly on the website. A link should be added and then the record saved, and do this for each item in the menu. Next, we'll edit the content on the home page. Click the Edit Front Page button, and then a title area and a text editor appears. Add some content, and then save changes when you're done. 
the home page is now starting to look complete. You would probably want to add more content to this section and perhaps an image as well. Now let's add a sermon to the library in the top menu. Click on the page and then on the Add New Record button. Give the sermon a title and then click to upload a new file. Select one from your computer and the file will show in the setup page. Next, add some further information to the file. All of it can also be modified at a later time. When you're done, click the Save Changes button to see the file in your library. And we can see that this file will play right away. Also from this page, you can add other related files, perhaps a document of notes or a link to a pertinent blog. Next, we'll configure the leadership page. So I'll click on its link and then on add new record to add a person. Start with the image, again uploaded from my computer. And then you can add further information about the person and save the changes. If you click on the person's name or title, the information for the person will display. Next, I'll configure the doctrine page, so I'll choose it from the top menu. I'm taken to a layout selection screen, and for now I'll choose the no image option to bring up a blank text editor. I'll add some text, and then save the changes. And now we can see some of the tools provided to manage content for web pages. At the top is a button containing column tools, and from here, I could add a new content section or click the Add Content link from the toolbar and scroll through the available types and simply drag it onto the page where I'd like it to go. I'll bring over another text section and choose the collapsible text type. Add a title and text and then save. And you can see that this content type gives a clickable header that reveals further text when expanded. Now, I'll show you how to add a video section. Click on Add Section again to find video from the list and drag it onto the page. There are several different types of video content that can be added, but for this demonstration, I'll select the YouTube type. I'll add a title and paste in the full URL to the video and then configure some other settings. After saving, the video will appear either as an embedded clip, or in this case, it will be a shadow box element that appears when clicked. To change text after it's been added to the page, simply double click the section, add the new content, click the save icon in the top right of the toolbar to save the changes. Now I'll go to the location page and embed a map. Choose the no image section, and I've already copied the embed code, so I'll just need to paste it in the correct place. Click on source, and then paste in the editor and save. The map will then appear directly in the page's content. This particular template allows for the side menu to be turned on or off, so I'm going to turn it on with this button. Then I'll select the calendar page to add an event. Click the Add New Event button, and I'm going to add a recurring event on every Sunday. So the start date will be the first Sunday of the recurrence, and the end date will be the last date of the recurrence. In this case, it's several years out. I'll add some more information to the event. And then select to have it occur weekly on Sundays. Save the event and you'll see the new event added to the calendar. There are so many more features to explore and page content types to utilize. 
To learn more, here is a helpful link to our technical support page where you'll find a number of useful options to get assistance. And if you're interested in using our live streaming service with your website, visit our live streaming information page to learn more and to start a free trial. Thanks for watching and enjoy working with your professional, affordable, manageable website from FinalWeb.